Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Today we're talking about shooting high resolution time lapse videos on your DSLR using photographs. What, what? Before I get into this tutorial, I want to mention that we're going to be doing more videos like this. So if there's anything you guys want to learn about photography, video, or even graphic design, let me know in the comments below and we'll make that happen. Okay, let's get into it. So it's super easy to set your camera up on a tripod, hit record, let it go for a few minutes, speed it up and post later, and you have yourself a time lapse. And sometimes that's really the only option, especially if you're in a rush or if you only have one camera with you, or you wanna just capture something really quick on the fly. But if you have time and you wanna create a super punchy, epic time lapse for your video using your DSLR and shooting it with photos is the only way to go, really. That's my personal favorite way to do it. The video is actually made from photos, so you can process the same way as you process your photographs. Bonus, you get a high resolution, dope time lapse for your video, and you get a photograph for Instagram, for printing. Some cameras have a built-in timer inside the camera. Uh, ours might. I just use this, because we've had this kicking around for a couple years. This is the Canon Timer Remote Control. This is what we use to shoot our time lapses. Hook this up to 5D3, pop that bad boy on a tripod, and let it go. But how? But how, you ask? Well, I'm gonna tell you how to do it. Drink break. First thing you wanna make sure is that you have a steady sturdy tripod. Each photo you shoot will be one frame of video. Each photo has to stay in the exact same spot or else you're gonna get camera shake when you put them together. There is a way to correct a little bit of camera shake um, in After Effects and in Premiere, but it's just way easier to get it done right in camera first. So get yourself a steady tripod. But last week it was super smoky in Vancouver. Chris and I popped down to the beach to check out the sunset and so we shot some time lapses. So we're gonna base this video around that time lapse shot, but I'm gonna show you a shitload of other ones that we've done. Uh, using different techniques. When you're choosing what you want to shoot for your time lapse, you want to make sure that there's something moving in the shot, or else it's just going to be like a really long clip of nothing. Uh, fast moving skies, water, waterfalls, traffic, crowds moving. And use your creativity and think of something kind of cool that you'd like to shoot and just play with it and experiment with it. So once you have your shot set up, you got your sturdy tripod, you got stuff moving, whether that's the foreground, background, sky, whatever, you do a little bit of math. And this is where I get up because I'm shit at math. So you need to answer a couple of questions for yourself. A, over how long of a period do you want to capture your time lapse? B, how long do you want your end time lapse to be? You want it to be three seconds, five seconds, 10 minutes long? That's a long time lapse. I, I probably would keep it short. C, how many frames per second is your end video going to be? We shoot everything in 24p or 23.976 frames per second. So for my sunset time lapse, I wanted the end result to show the sun physically going down behind the mountains. The frame rate in which I wanted to output this time lapse was at 24 frames per second which means I would have to capture 24 pictures per one second of video. So here's where the math comes in. For five seconds of video, I would need to shoot 24 frames times five seconds, which equals 120 frames. I need 120 pictures to create a five second time lapse. This app, it's called TPE, the Photographer's Ephemeris. I can never say the word properly. This app actually tells you exactly when the sun goes down, when it comes up, and you can actually position yourself on the map and what direction the sun's actually coming down so you can pick the location of your, where you wanna shoot your time lapse based on this app. So we use this all the time. I'll leave it in the link below. If you're shooting, if you're chasing sunsets and sunrises, excellent app to have, I'll leave it. You should check it out. According to my TPE app, the sun was gonna go down within 30 minutes. So I used 30 minutes as my marker for how long I wanted to expose the shots for. So 30 minutes converted into seconds is 1800 seconds. So 30 minutes equals 1800 seconds. So once you have that number, you need to divide the number of seconds by the amount of frames you have. 1800 divided by 120 is 15 seconds. 15 is the number of seconds that are gonna be in between each exposure. So you're gonna take one frame every 15 seconds. You can actually program that right into your remote timer. You're gonna to wanna to take into consideration your shutter speed as well. For this time lapse, I use like a higher shutter speed, but if you want some juicy, tasty, magical, smooth creaminess, um, use a longer shutter speed, you know, two seconds, one second, I don't know, a quarter of a second, just to get some motion blur. So for crowds, for water, that works really well. So I'll leave the calculation for you in the description box. So once you finish your capture, head home, dump your photos into Lightroom. Typically what I do is edit my photo in Lightroom. I'll make sure to actually crop my photos uh, to a 16 by nine ratio, which is what we use for video. You're gonna wanna sync that exact edit 
for your one photo over the entire duration of clips that you have for your time lapse to make sure that all the edits are A, the same, B, they're cropped exactly the same, and if you use any brushes that they're all in the same spot. So make sure that everything is checked off once you sync those photographs. So once you have your time lapse edited and your edits are all synced up and juicy and everything is cropped and looking tight, you're gonna to wanna to export those as high resolution JPEG. So just a full res, or you can actually set the resolution of your video. So we shoot 4K, so we'll probably export it at 3840 by 2160. The other option is to export it at the photograph's full resolution, create the time lapse, and then you actually have some room to do some effects on the time lapse in Premiere. So you can actually make it look like the camera is moving as time passes. You're gonna open up your project in Premiere, you're gonna double click in that window to import your file. You're gonna find your exports in a folder. Make sure that all of the JPEGs from that export for your time lapse are A, in order, in sequence from the very start to the very end of your time lapse and make sure they're in their own folder. You're gonna import these as a JPEG sequence. So anything else in that folder will come in as a sequence. You want only the photos from your time lapse to be in that folder. And it comes in as one video file. So you can just drag that right into your timeline. If you find that it's actually too long and you want it to be shorter, you can either cut it, but you're gonna cut off part of your time lapse, or you can use R on your keyboard for the rate stretch tool. And you can just select the end of your time lapse and drag it to the time you want it. And what that does, it actually speeds up the time lapse. It doesn't cut off the end. The great thing about shooting a photo time lapse is that you have all these raw photos that you can actually use. Sometimes I'll just pick my favorite. I'll either post it on social or I'll throw it in a folder for printing. So guys, let me know in the comments below if you found this helpful. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. We're going to be putting new videos like this out every single Friday. We do new vlogs on Sunday and Wednesday. And hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. The nice thing about shooting a time last Time lapse. Time lapse. Time lapse. I can't say time lapse. It's so hot. I gotta get the pants on and get these pants off.